Hello, and welcome back to the Mouse vs. Python channel. I'm your host, Mike Driscoll, and today I want to talk about creating a custom widget in the Textual package. So, Textual is a way to create a text-based user interface with Python. It's one of the more advanced uh, packages out there that you could use. And they actually come with some uh, custom widgets that they've used inside the actual Textual library. So let's take a look at one of those to give us some ideas. So let's see, let's see, from textual.widgets, we'll just uh, import uh, the welcome widget. And if you control click into, uh, into it, you can see that the welcome widget inherits from static, which is one of the widgets in there. And it uses some other, some other things. It has a container and a button. And that's, that's really all there is to the welcome widget. So we can use knowledge like that to create our own widget. So you could uh, create widgets another way. You could actually dig down all the way down into the button and the container and figure out you know, how they're drawing it on the screen. We're not going to do that because that would take a long time and I don't want to do that in this video. But for this one, we're just going to create a really simple toggle widget, a toggle button, I should say. The, way, the textual actually comes with a switch widget, which acts like a toggle. but you know, if you've done a lot of uh, GUI programming, you're probably familiar with a toggle button where you push the button and it looks like it's depressed or the state changes in some way to show that it has changed or been toggled. We're going to try to create one of those in textual, uh, kind of live coding in a way. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. We'll just uh, create our app and um, everything else that we need. Let's see, we need an app and a compose result. And I'm going to use Textual's own. Um, I think I'm going to use its own button. So we'll use that. And then we're just going to subclass it. And we're going to create our own toggle button. So that's the idea. I just want to reuse as much of their code as I can. But I want to make it work a little bit differently than a regular button does. So let's do that. Let's see. And we'll just take what it gives me. So that's cool. Um, you can't even see it all, but there's a lot of defaults. And we probably don't need all of this stuff to subclass it correctly. In fact, we can probably look in here and figure that out. If you look in the actual button code and go down to its init, um, somewhere in here, you can see that the init is really only using the label variant, active effectory, or tooltip. Those are really the only four that we need, and the rest is used in some, some magical manner. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to do this. And then we're going to go ahead and say, um, I know I want, I, want a, I want a couple of labels. So let's create a labels argument. And this will be a dictionary of strings. Or no, a dictionary with ints and strings. So the ints will be the keys, and the strings will be the values. And these will be the two labels that we'll alternate between uh, on our toggle button. So like on, off, or you know, toggled, untoggled, uh, something like that. Uh, we probably want a default label. Um, I suppose there's, there would be a case where you wouldn't want um, the button to actually change the text. So maybe the labels, it doesn't make sense. But I'm, I'm going to go with it for now. There's, there's ways around that. Um, I'd also like to make it stand out more when it's toggled. So we could use um, Textual's border for that. So let's try doing that. Let's see, so a border in Textual is always a tuple. And it's two strings. Uh, basically, you tell it the border style and the border color. And so that's what that'll be. And I think I messed this up. We want this to be, we don't want it to be equal to not, and we want this to be string. Okay, we want that to be a required argument. All right. So let's add a toggled state. Toggled is going to be false by default. And then we're going to set the label. So self.label is actually something that's part of the regular button. We want to set that to the default label. And then we just want to have access to our labels. So let's take that to labels. And we're going to set the border up. So that's going to equal our border. Great. And then we just need to call the superclass. 
so that we actually instantiate the regular button the normal way. So name equals name, um, ID equals ID. When I was playing with this earlier, it auto-completed for me. I'm not sure why it's not doing that right now, but that's okay. Disabled equals disabled. All right, cool. So now we have that. The other thing we want to do is we want to create an, a special thing to happen when the user presses the button. So we're going to take on button press and we'll set up our event handler. In this case, it's button. Um, button.pressed. This one won't return anything, so we can set that to none. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So if it's not toggled, um, we want it to do something different. So if not toggled, we're going to do events.button.styles.border equals self.border. I always type the wrong thing there. There we go. And then we're going to have an else. And we'll just set this border to none in that case. So when it's not toggled, there will be no border. Great. And we just need to set self.toggled equals not toggled. So that'll, that'll effectively switch it back and forth when you hit the button. And to make it especially nice, we'll go ahead and change our button label when it gets toggled. So that's going to equal labels. That's our that's our list of our dictionary of labels, and we'll use the toggled state as our key. So true and false map to one and zero in Python, so they're actually uh, evaluated as integers. So that should work for our case here, and it should still match up with our type hinting. If you know a little bit about it, you could you could set this as bool if you wanted to, I suppose, but we'll use int for now. Now we need to test out our code because right now we can't test it without an actual app. So let's test out our toggle. We'll just create a test toggle app, and we just need to uh, create a compose and create our create our application. So let's see, compose result. And then we need to yield out our toggle button. And we need to figure out what we want to put in there for our toggle button. Let's see, let's do our labels. And we'll set that to a dictionary of one is like on, I suppose, and zero is off. And that'll work for that. So true and false, great, awesome. Let's see, what else do we need? We want a default label, so let's set that to off. And hmm, I think that'll work. Let's go with that, and then we can try this out. So let's go back over here. If name equals mean, and then we can create our app. And then app uh, run. I think I did something wrong there. But uh, we don't want toggle button, we want test toggle. Yep. I knew I was doing something wrong there. Okay. Don't need any of that. All right. Great. I think we got that all working the way I want it to. So now over here, we should be able to run um, python toggle.py. And get our code to run. And it looks like I forgot something. So we're missing a required argument, we're missing border. So we should have set that up. Um, let's default that to something. Let's just set that up to something so we don't forget to do that again. Um, I kind of like the double border. You can find out more about borders here in a minute and I'll show you how. I'm going to set it to gold. So if you go over here and run uh, textual borders, um, you can see all the different borders that you can use in, in textual. So I like the double one. It kind of does a double line around the, the widget. So I, th I thought that would look nice on my toggle button. Let's see if it does. So here we go. We're going to try running it again. So anyway, not to bore you with the details, but I spent a, a couple of minutes off screen um, debugging what was wrong. And it turns out that in this case, we needed to move our uh, super. Uh, from here 
up a little bit. So let's cut that out of there. We'll just cut that up and we'll put it up here at the beginning. And that's That was the problem that I was having earlier. I just didn't like it that the super was in the wrong order. So, you know, we learned something new today. And I think we also need to do uh, self.variant equals variant. And then we have our button. So now we have an off button. If we click it, its label switches to on. And you can see that it toggles because it gets this nice little outline. And if we click it again, it goes back off. So that's great. We, have, we now have a toggle button. Um, if you want to actually do something in your app that's using the toggle button, you can also define an outer on button pressed event. So we could do something extra in here. So we could do dot um, pressed here as well. And this one will also return none. And you know, maybe we want to do um, if events dot button dot toggled. So it's not going to autocomplete because we didn't set this up quite right to um, for it to detect the self.toggled. That's okay, we'll figure that out another day. But suffice it to say this should work because it is part of this magical object. So at this point we should be able to do, if it's toggled, we should be able to change like its background. So let's change the background color to something else. Let's say blue. And then we can say else, um, we'll just grab this, and I don't know, we'll say it's, we'll change the background to green or something. So now, if we rerun our code, we can, when we click it, it'll change it to blue when it's on and green when it's off. So, and that's all happening out here in the actual app part. So, you know, when you're toggling it, you would probably be running something. You might run a long, a long running process. Uh, you might play music, for example, and then you, you want to pause it. So make a uh, play pause button using a toggle button like this. There's lots of different options. And of course, you can make your toggle button button accept other things. Maybe you don't want it to use uh, text. You could uh, you could like send emoji in, and maybe have a play button and a pause button that actually has the the right look and feel. Or you could uh, move the colors that we have here up into this on press, and then just pass in the colors as another tuple. So we could add like a colors variable here for the different states. There's lots of options. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and you'll start creating your own custom widgets in Textual. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.